Jerry at Fair Oaks. Come on, Harold. I'm just going into my room. I just met Lee downstairs, and he said you were looking for me. Yeah, I am. Uh, come on in a minute. What's Lee doing? He was talking with Tubby. He said he'd be up in a little while. Okay. Uh, sit down. What did you want to see me about? Wait till I pull this chair up here. There. Now, listen. I'm, I'm going to tell you this fast. Okay. I want you to do me a favor. That is, I want you to do Mac a favor, yes, and even your dad. I don't get you. Well, I guess I started wrong. Now I'll start at the beginning. In the first place, remember the other day when Lee and I were talking and we said it was a secret? Yeah. Well, what we were talking about was a secret then, but now I can let you in on it. It's about an invention, an airplane invention. An invention? Uh Uh-huh. Max invention. Would you like to help put over a good airplane invention? Sure I would. I'll do anything I can. Good. Now, here's where you come in. We want to get your dad interested in it. Well, if it's about airplanes, he'll be interested. (laughs) That's what I figured. I'll tell you what it is. It's a true altimeter. It tells the exact distance between a plane and the ground or mountain it's flying over instead of the distance from sea level. Do you understand? I don't know. I guess so. Well, it's good. You can take my word for that. It's something that's been needed a a long time. And besides, it also warns when the plane is flying into something like a, a mountain or something like that. Say, that sounds all right. Max already got a little model of it, and boy, it's keen. But he wants to build a working model so he can have it tried out in a real airplane and see if it works. And you want Dad to try it out for him? That's part of it. But more important is the money to build a working model. How much? Well, it'll take quite a bit, about $250. Jiminy! Now, here's what I thought. If we can get your dad to come here and see Mac's invention and have a talk with him, well, maybe he'd put up the money and, well, then, of course, he'd be part owner. I see what you mean. Sure, he might do that and help Mac with the working model, too. That's it, exactly. But what's the favor you want of me? Well, I want you to write to your dad and ask him to come here to see the invention. Is that all? Well, that's all. Well, it'll have to be a good letter to get him to make a trip all the way to Fair Oaks. I figured I could help you with it and explain the invention a little. You know, so he'll understand that it's something really worthwhile. That's okay. We can write the letter whenever you want to. Good. Now, I'll tell you what I... Hi. How are you getting along? Oh. oh, okay, Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi. Did Jerry tell you all about it? Uh-huh. Well, what do you think of it? Do you think your dad might be interested in something like that? I don't know, but I sh- should think he would. Well, we're going to write him a nice long letter tonight and tell him all about it and find out. Oh, boy, that's great. Now, uh, if you've got that settled, I've got something very important to take up. Can you listen now? Sure. What is it? Well, we've got work to do. What do you mean? we got work to do? Don't we always have work to do? What is it? Uh, what are you talking about? Now, take it easy. Let me explain. Will it take long? Oh, Jerry. Okay, go ahead. I'm only kidding. But I said this was important. All right. Go on and tell it. We're listening. Well, in the first place, there's a tradition here at Fair Oaks that I don't think either one of you are familiar with. And that's painting the stack on the powerhouse. Huh? That's right. It's up to the plebes to paint the smokestack on the powerhouse. But why? Yeah, why should we have to do work like that? Well, I don't want to learn to be a painter. You don't understand. It's an honor to do it. Well, go on. Well, it's like this. Every year, the freshman class manages to paint the letters FMA up on the stack. The upperclassmen always try to keep the plebes from doing it. They have spies, and whenever they see a few plebes having a meeting, they try to find out what it's about. 
And in general, they make it pretty tough for us to get the letters up there. I see what you mean. Well, what's your idea? Well, I was just talking with Tubby, and he said he thought some of the other plebes were planning on painting the stack one night this week. Oh, then you can do it at night. Well, that's not so hard. Say, it's plenty hard. Those upperclassmen are on their toes. They're watching every minute. Has the smokestack been painted every year? Yes, sir. Every year since Fair Oaks was founded. Although one year it looked like the plebes were licked. It was the day before graduation, before they got the letters up on the stack. Boy, that was a close call. Mm, I'll say it was. Can anyone do it? Sure. The plebes that paint the stack get the glory, and as long as they're at Fair Oaks, they're known as the paint crew. Then what do you say we do it? Well, I was just coming to that. Hey, that's okay. I'm in on it. But, uh, well, what do you say we take a walk over to Max? I want to tell him I talked to Harold and that we're going to write that letter. Yeah, sure. We can talk on the way over. Yeah. Come on, get your cap, Harold. Okay. <clears throat> we'll have to be careful and make sure nobody's listening. Ah, no, not a soul around. Everybody's over at the gym or down to the lake. Now, listen. If those other fellas are planning on painting the stack this week, we've got to beat them to it. There's no time to lose. We've got to paint that smokestack tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. We haven't got the paint or anything yet. I know it. We'll have to work fast. But Tubby and I were talking it over, and I think our plan will work. Okay, shoot. Well, Tubby's going over to Peter's hardware store next to Max just before mess. Then he's going to take the paint and brush and hide them in the bushes right near the powerhouse. You mean he's going to buy the paint and brush at the hardware store? Sure. And he's going to lay out the money. Well, we can chip in and give him back what he's paid for. Say, it. that's okay. That's keen. Well, then what? Well, then we'll have to get together and have another meeting. What for? Hmm, to decide just who's going to do the painting. We'll draw for it. <laughs> hey, this is going to be fun. Yeah, fun if we're not caught. What would happen if we got caught? Well, if we were caught by an officer, we'd most likely get a very generous portion of the merit. But if we were caught by an upperclassman, we'd have to go back up on the ladder with a cup of gasoline and a toothbrush and clean it off. And maybe that isn't a job. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> well, we won't be caught. Oh, we hope not. Hey, uh, how about that, uh, the ladder? Well, there's supposed to be a ladder on the roof of the powerhouse that we can hoist up on the smokestack. That's a help. Yeah, if it's there. Now, uh, let's not say anything about it while we go through Custis Hall. Okay, I got you. How'd you fellas getting along with your English and spelling? Well, I don't know. I, I think that maybe hey, I'm that's doing good all. stuff. Keep it up. Uh, that, that problem Mrs. Gardner gave us this morning about the, the farmer that had uh, ten acres and, and, and a tractor, well, that, that kind of got me. <laughs> Good acting, boy. <laughs> Too bad there was nobody around to hear you. <laughs> now, uh, what were you saying? Uh, we were talking about the ladder being handy for us. Oh, well, let's not worry about that. It'll be there. They leave the ladder up there all the time. Hey, but wait a minute. How about getting up to the roof of the powerhouse? Oh, that's the easiest part of it. There's a little iron ladder that's fastened right into the cement around on the west side. I know the kind you mean. Like they have on water towers. Mm hmm Well, we're pretty nearly to Max. Now, listen. Right after mess tonight, we'll talk about when we're going to meet, okay? Sure, perfect. Hey, how about you, Harold? You can count on me. Right after mess and just before we go to study hall. Right. Okay, here we are. Go ahead, Jerry. Hello, Max. Oh, welcome, Max. I'll be right with you. Okay. Hey, look. Look at fellas. What is it? What's all the excitement? Look at this aviation magazine here. It's got my dad's picture right in the front cover. Say, that's nice. Guy Linwell. Number one test pilot. Mm -hmm. oh, well, greetings, lads. Hi. Hey, I've got good news for you, Mac. Oh, good. Good for you. <laughs> there's, there's nothing I like better than good news. <laughs> I'm going to look through this aviation magazine, okay, Mac? Oh, sure, sure, lad. Help yourself. It's got my dad's picture on it. Look it. Well, no, that's great, Harold. That's fine. Yes, sir. Say, Mac, uh -huh. Harold thinks it's a swell idea. Uh, we're going to get that letter off to his dad tonight. Oh, fine, fine. You're a man of action, Jerry. <laughs> yes, sir, a man of action. Uh, has Mr. Russell been here yet, Mac? Aye, uh, aye, uh, he was. Uh, and he's gone this time for good. Yeah, he won't be coming back anymore, so I hope Mr. Linwell has a mind to take an interest in the altimeter. Uh, I've set my cap for that. Uh, what did Mr. Russell say? Oh, he was put out, Jerry. Yes, sir, he was put out. He didn't like the idea of me wanting to get someone else in on the invention. Uh, I told you he wouldn't go for that. Yeah, you were right. But uh, I told him the truth. I, I told him uh, it was my invention, and I thought I had a right to do with it as I pleased. Well, no, you were right, Mac. Yeah, he got real huffy there towards the end. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm lucky I've got a glass in that front door. <laughs> <laughs> Did he slam it? Slam it? Losh, you'd think it was an earthquake. <laughs> when he shut that door behind him, everything in the establishment shook. <laughs> well, will you have something to drink or some ice cream? Or some... No, no, thanks, Mac. We just came over to talk and find out about Mr. Russell. Oh, well, that's the story. You're you're not sorry, are you? No, sir. No, 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 I'm not. He, he showed his colors, Russell did. He said he, he showed himself up by losing his temper. Hey, hey, look at this. Here in this magazine. What is it? Another picture of your dad? It's more important than that. 
It's about your invention, Mac. Huh? This is the thing Jerry told me you invented. About my invention? Well, that couldn't be, lad. Uh, no one knows about it. That is, outside of yourselves and, well, maybe a couple of others. Well, look. See for yourself. Here's the story. Read it. Rush. Well, what do you know about that? What is it? Read it, Mac. Uh, uh, listen. Aviation gets absolute altimeter. New invention shows height of airplane above ground. This new technical advancement, using a shortwave sound principle, gives accurate distance between plane and ground over which it is flying. The old type only gave altitude from sea level. Bosch. That's it. That's my idea. Well, read on, Mac. Uh, the new altimeter can also be pointed so as to tell distance between plane and approaching objects. Even that part of it is yours. Yes, yes it is. What else does it say, Mac? The uh, invention was perfected after a year's work by the inventors. Airlines welcome this new safeguard, and all planes will be equipped with the new contrivance as soon as delivery can be made. Oh, Jiminy. That's a shame, Mac. I'm awfully sorry for you. What? What's this? Why, I think it's wonderful. It's been tried out and it works. Just think of the added safety to the thousands of folks that travel in airplanes. Yes, but think of the money you lost by not getting yours out first. Jerry. Jerry Dugan, I'm surprised at you. Losh, lad, you're kidding. Right from the start, I told you it wasn't the money I was after. It's the good of the thing. For the good of humanity. I'm as happy as can be that it's working, and, and, and maybe a year or so sooner than I could have got it to work. Oh, be grateful, lads, be grateful. Why, gratitude is a poor man's money, hmm? Why, I'm happy and a little proud that I thought of the same thing that these big engineers worked out. Oh, oh now, cheer up. Now, there's more ideas and millions of more things to invent. Oh, I might wake up in the morning with uh, something brand new to work on. That's a nice way to feel about it. Well, it's the only way, Harold. <laughs> I've got a free mind now to go ahead with something else. <laughs> oh, I know how you feel, Jerry. You are pulling for me, and I appreciate it. Hmm? But don't worry. Something else will come up. You'll see. <laughs> then you can help me again. Will you declare us in on your next invention, man? Oh, you bet I will. The three of us will work it out together. Dugan, Phillips, and MacLeod. <laughs> that's a promise. Hooray! Hey, how's that, Lee? <laughs> Boy, that's keen. What do you say we get back now? Maybe we'll have time to talk tomorrow. Be about... quiet. Uh, what's this? Is there a secret I'm not in on? Well, no, no, nothing like that, Mac. You're not fooling me, Lee Phillips? Yes, it is a secret, Mac. But just wait until tomorrow. You'll find out about it then. Hey, come on, Jerry. Harold. Okay, I'm coming. Uh, I let you in on my secrets. Yeah, and we'll let you in on this. But tomorrow, sure. <laughs> All right, whatever it is, good luck to you, lads. <laughs> secret. 